Welcome to the second episode of Learning AI with GitHub Copilot. I'm Carlotta Castelluccio, Cloud Advocate at Microsoft, and today I'm going to show you how GitHub Copilot can help you explore machine learning basic concept useful to know before starting coding with Python. And to do so, we'll be using again a Jupyter Notebook in Visual Studio Code. So in the previous episode, we explained with Gustavo how to set up your development environment to create a code space using a dev container configuration with all the prerequisites we need to execute data science tasks, including GitHub Copilot extension. But another thing you need to check before starting is that your paid programmer is ready and active. And you can do that by just checking here in the taskbar that you have the icon of Copilot active. Okay, so let's go straight to our goal. Um, one thing you can do with Copilot is using it as a mentor and asking questions. So I will start to ask the very first question about machine learning, uh, and that is, what is machine learning, right? Um, and one thing I want to highlight here is that I'm using this syntax here with the Q and then following uh, with my question, because this makes Copilot know uh, that I want to ask it a question. And then um, the, other, uh, the other thing is that when, since I want the answer to this question, I use the syntax A and it is going to complete with the answer to the question above. So let's see the answer from Copilot uh, around this question. And is machine learning is the science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed. So this is exactly the kind of definition you would find about machine learning on the web. So this is accurate, but still a little bit unclear maybe for um, a machine learning beginner. So let's go, let's, let's do one step ahead and let's just um, ask to copilot. Um, so what do you mean by uh, explicitly programmed? So uh, let it, explain a little bit better what, what is explicitly, explicitly programmed. So let's see the answer. We can think of a computer program as a set of instructions that tell the computer what to do. For example, we can write a program that tells the computer to add two numbers together. And then let's go, um, yeah, let, let's, let's, do, let's go at the next line to have, um, the, the other part of the answer. So we were saying to add two numbers together and print the result. This is an example of a program that is explicitly programmed. The program is explicitly programmed because the instructions are explicitly written out. Okay, now we have already uh, a, a better explanation at least of one part of the definition. But another question we might have is uh, at this point, uh, what's the difference with machine learning then? And let's see its answer. So the answer is machine learning is the science of getting computers again to act without being explicitly programmed. Instead of, of explicitly programming the computer to do something, we can show it examples of what we want it to do, and then it will figure it out how to do it on its own. Okay, so now already this makes more sense. So the difference basically is that uh, um, in a program, we in a program we have the instructions that the program, the classical program, should follow. Uh, while for machine learning, we don't have we don't give instructions, but it's the program that basically learn uh, some patterns from the data. Um, so it, um, it automatically learns patterns from the data without having some instruction from us, which, is, which sounds very powerful, right? So let's go one step ahead again. And let's see, um, let's explore now a subset of machine learning, which is supervised learning. So the next question would be, the next question for Copilot would be, what is supervised learning? And let's see the answer. So the answer is, 
Supervised learning is the machine task of learning a function that maps an input to an output based on example input-output pairs. So it infers a function from a labeled training data consisting of a set of training examples. In supervised learning, each example is a pair consisting of an input object, typically a vector, and a desired up to value, also called supervisory signal. OK, so we have learned that supervised learning is called like this because you are going to label the data in input to the model in a way that it knows already, it, or better, it learns the pattern on how to assign the label to the uh, to the input by seeing some example of assignments of the output to the input. That's great. So we have the definition of supervised learning, which is a, a type of machine learning. But now let let's ask for some examples that could be more clear. Um, so let's see. Some examples of supervised learning are given a picture of a person, we have to predict their name. Okay. Another example could be, given an email, we have to predict whether it's a spam or not. OK, so having examples always help us to understand better the definition of, of something, in this case, supervised learning. So in this definition of supervised learning, Copilot mentioned the training process. But let's go deeper in what is this training process and what are the basic concepts that help us training a model. So the following question would be, what is a label and what is a feature? So Copilot says, the label is the thing we are predicting and the feature is the input variable. So for example, in the, in, uh, here in this case, given a picture of a person, we have to predict the name. So the name would be the label while um, the, the the details of uh, the, the pixels, for example, or the details uh, in, the, in, in contained in the uh, the information contained in the picture will be the, the features that have the model predict the label. Great. So another thing we need to uh, know about the training process is that we need to split the data into sub into two subsets. But let's ask Copilot what is what are these two subsets, the training set and the test set. So this is the answer of Copilot. The training set is the data set used to train the model, while the test set is the data set used to test the model. So we are saying that the test set is used some way, in some way to evaluate the performance of the model. But then this means that the next phase of, uh, of the machine learning pipeline or process will be basically evaluating the model. So our last question will be, what does it mean to evaluate a model? Let's see a copilot answer. So its answer is that evaluating a model means determining how good the model is at making predictions. OK, so let's go into practice. At this point, um, uh, or better, how, better, better than what, how can we measure accuracy of a model at this point? So Copilot suggests that we can measure accuracy of a model by comparing the predictions of the model to the actual labels. And let's go ahead to see if we can get an example. Yes. For example, uh, if we have a model that predicts whether an email is spam or not, we can compare the prediction of the model to the actual labels of the emails in the test set. Great. So that's when the tests that come into, um, into play, when we want really to evaluate the performance of our model. Great. So we have learned all the uh, all these basic concepts of machine learning fundamentals. So we are now ready to get all those things in practice. Um, and we will do that in the next episode. So stay tuned because in the next episode, we are going to rely again on GitHub Copilot, but we are going to really um, 
create a machine learning demo, and in particular, a machine learning model, a classifier model using our AI pair program, uh, uh, our AI pair programmer, GitHub Copilot. So thank you and see you at the next episode.